What is up, y'all? It is that sports kid back with part seven of college football imperialism. Wow, thank y'all so much for the love on the on the last episodes. That is honestly insane. I did not expect this to blow up that much. Let's get right into it. This is the map where we left off from episode five. We're gonna spin the wheel. We have eighty three teams left. Who is the next victim? of this map tournament thing it looks like it's gonna be colorado no way i remember last episode colorado upset arizona right. can i like draw on this or something is it slow oh it's lagging it's lagging a little bit that's kind of weird anyway where is Colorado going? Colorado is moving southeast. That, to me, from the logo, looks like it is going to be TCU. So this is an actual game that's going to happen. This upcoming year, Colorado is going to play at TCU. I'm probably going to watch it, honestly. I am probably not going to have anything better to do than watch Colorado. He's going to be... They're going to be mid. Um... But they will have Deion Sanders. They're going to play the previous national championship runner-up. Because, boy, they did not deserve the championship. And they didn't get it. Didn't get it. Gave up, like, 70 points almost. This is a 12-point overall differential in TCU's favor. And they have home field advantage. So. Fort Worth, Texas. Also called Cowtown. The site for this game. TCU has played a lot of games already. I think they beat Texas. Um, they beat Texas. Texas Tech. Someone else. I'll, I'll see when we look at the map again. Took two early field goals. The big ugly frogs. Okay, there's a touchdown, but then Colorado responds, and they score another touchdown, not TCU, with a couple field goals. Colorado with a touchdown to make it a three-point lead in their favor. End of the third quarter, and TCU scores scores a couple of times. Colorado scores a touchdown. Got a five-point, nope. TCU scored into the game. 36 to 28 victory for TCU. And let's take a look at that map. Oh my goodness. Do we do we see that? TCU is taking all of that land. What a what a start to this. If I can pull up the I still don't know how to use Photoshop. Get rid of that Colorado Buffaloes logo. There we go. Anyway, TCU is um freaking gigantic. Goodness. They have like almost all of Colorado, most of New Mexico, good chunk of Texas, and I think that's all of Arizona. Um, they're the biggest team on the map. By far, and Colorado sadly died, took out Arizona. Took out, I think they took out Air Force. Maybe Arizona played Air Force. I forgot. Who's next? Is it Louisville or La Tech? I got someone comment and say, and let say that they like how I say La Tech. I mean, La Tech, La Tech is cool like that. Anyway, it's Louisville. Louisville. Um, I'm gonna pull the arrow over. Louisville is going northwest, which means they're going to take on Purdue, who took out. I think they took out. Um, Illinois and Indiana, but Louisville is going to Purdue now. There is Louisville. Can we find Purdue? There they are. That that is the game, right? Yeah, yeah. 15 minute quarters. Let's 
So Louisville actually has an overall advantage. Um, they're plus five. But Purdue has home field advantage, and they've played a couple games, so they are... They're in it, they're ready. This is Louisville's first game of the tournament, but they win the coin toss. Really, that's all that matters, if you if you think about it enough. Just the coin toss. I mean, how much more fun would the season be if the coin toss gave you a six-point advantage? Hmm? Hmm? That would be cool. Anyway, Louisville with a big 21-point lead right now. In the third quarter, Purdue scores a touchdown. Purdue scores another touchdown. Louisville with a field goal. Louisville with a touchdown. Purdue with a touchdown. Louisville with a 17-point lead, and that is how it is going to end. Louisville 37, Purdue 20. This is why imperialism is so weird, because a, a school like Purdue, who's played a couple of games already, just don't, if they don't show up one game, no matter how much they have done, they can get upset and lose everything in one game. Oh, we also need to remember that this is Miami of Ohio's territory. I'm actually going to make that white. I think white is their secondary color. I think it is. I just don't want this to get mixed up like that. I don't know why I made that T. Uh, there we go. Now we can make it cardinal red. Anyway, there we go. Louisville is now maybe the biggest team in the Midwest area. Missouri is pretty big. They haven't played any games. Looking for Purdue. Getting rid of them. 81 teams left in this tournament. Is it going to be Cincinnati? It most definitely will. Where are the Bearcats going to go? They're going to go northwest. This is going to be a little weird, though. Um, so they can play either Louisville or Miami, Ohio. Bring up the arrow. From the arrow on the map, going through the logo, I think it's Miami, Ohio. Say what you want, but I think that's Miami, Ohio. I know that this is a rivalry game. I think it's the battle for the victory bell, I want to say. We will find out. I can pull up Cincinnati. Where they go? There they are. In Miami, Ohio. Battle for the Victory Bell. They have played this game a lot, and Cincinnati has dominated for a long time. Ten point advantage in terms of overall in the Bearcats' favor going into this game, but Miami, Ohio does have the home field advantage. I kind of have a shockingly large stadium. Let me... I'm actually kind of interested to see how big their stadium is. Cincinnati, 4-11 point lead. Miami field goal, Miami touchdown, I think that was. Cincinnati... With a 12-point lead after halftime now. Miami with a field goal. Cincinnati scores a couple times. 
that might be the nail in the coffin. 51 to 22. Yeah. Yep. Miami, Ohio, I think they were they were on the road to a comeback. But uh time was not in their favor. And these games are played on 15 minute quarters. So Cincinnati is going to walk away with this victory. Nothing nothing great for Miami, Ohio in this tournament. Sorry, Miami fans. You got taken out by your rivals before you could really make an impact in this tournament. Right, right. Let me make this brush size a little smaller. There we go. And now Cincinnati is quite a vertical school. With a very long border with Louisville and West Virginia on either side. Miami, Ohio are gone. 80 teams left in this tournament. The next victim is KU. Where are the Rock Chalk Jayhawks going to go? Not a Kansas fan. But I'll most definitely root for KU when possible. Is this going to be the border war? Kansas versus Missouri. If we look at from the logo with the arrow, that is definitely Mizzou. Pull up the game. I'm a little sad that this game is not played annually anymore. I don't I don't remember ever watching it. But uh I'm sure it would be a good game. Border Showdown. Same thing. Border Showdown series. KU Mizzou. Missouri has a two overall advantage going into the game. It's time for the border. Kansas is going to kick off. Missouri touchdown. Missouri touchdown. Missouri field goal. Missouri touchdown. Missouri touchdown. Missouri field goal. Um. Nothing. Nothing. Kansas touchdown. Yay. Um. It's kind of a blowout, a little bit. Oh, oh, Kansas. Kansas has 22 points. Whoa. That's a lot. That's a lot for Kansas. Anyway, Missouri wins with a final score of 39-22. Wow. That's crazy. Sorry for Kansas fans. Had a good season. Had a good season just to get taken out by their rivals. Kansas is gone. 79 teams remain. Who is next? Is it going to be K-State? Or Kent State? Yes, it will be. The Flashes. Where is Kent State? Over here. In the Northeast. Kent State is going to play Bowling Green in this game. With the arrow going southwest. Kent State. Bowling Green. Oh, this is actual... Actually, a rivalry. 
Battle for the Anniversary Award. Interesting. Th this is the game, right? Yeah. Cool. We are about halfway through this episode. A three overall advantage going to Kent State, but Bowling Green does have home field advantage. It's time to battle for the anniversary award. It was established in 1985 in commemoration of both schools founding in 1910 and in celebration of their 75th anniversary. Bowling Green has an interesting looking grandstand on that side. I don't know what direction like on a compass that would be, but it's an interesting grandstand. And then they have the athletic, I don't know, training facility behind the end zone. Kent State is a... Uh, they're winning, I guess. If you if you want to say that they're winning, then... They're by 24... 34 to 9, 43 to 9, 46 to 9. Nah, it's a ball game. Bowling Green had a very good run, but I guess they were just, like, tired or something. I don't think they've actually played in a couple episodes. Now, Kent State has a very strange-looking... Oh, man, Michigan's gonna screw this up. Because their color is too similar for Photoshop to recognize. Um, that would be fine. I'm just, I'm just stealing that Toledo territory. I do not care. Can we... Yes, there we go. Kent State, congratulations. You did something. You did something. Um... You have done something else. You cut off almost you cut off all the Michigan schools from going anywhere out of Michigan. Pretty much. So you know, that's cool. Um Kent State does not leave. Bowling Green will leave. Falcons had a good run. Who is next? UNLV or USC? The USC Trojans will be the next team up. They have some very strange counties, but um, if you look at that, that arrow going through the USC logo is definitely UCLA. So we are going to have another rivalry game you can just call this rivalry episode usc at ucla this is the battle for the victory bell pretty sure we just watched that USC has the five overall advantage, but they are the road team. But they have Caleb Williams. So, you never know. UCLA has D um, Dorian Thompson Robinson. I think that's his name. Cannot confirm nor deny that his name is Dorian Thompson Robinson. Tied ball. Oh no, UCLA lead. Tied ball game in the second quarter, nearing halftime. At halftime, tied. USC touchdown. USC second touchdown. USC third touchdown. UCLA touchdown. UCLA touchdown. USC touchdown. 
UCLA touchdown. Seven point game. Cannot finish it. 42 35 victory for the Trojans. Congratulations to USC on your victory over your nemesis. I think. Couldn't tell you. I don't think enough people go to UCLA games to even know that this is a rivalry. USC just runs Southern California, though. After UCLA beat um, SDSU. SDSU. Oh, we cannot forget to give them these two islands. Two little islands. Anyway, who's next? I have to remove UCLA. There we go. 77 teams. We might be able to get through two, three more. It's going to be Wazoo. Wazoo. They're still on the map, right? Yes, yes, they are. Get that camera out of here. Was it? No, you can't. You can't go to Canada. Someone Fraser just canceled their football program. You can't go play them. Yeah, yeah. I know, I know. The NCAA's only Canadian school in D2 just canceled their football program. They they really want to play Canada. Um, I'm gonna say that is fair game. Washington State to Oregon State. I'm tired of spinning that arrow. It's west enough. I'm pretty sure this is a rivalry game. I don't I don't know if that has a name. Washington State, Oregon State. Yeah, just a rivalry game. Oregon State, I don't think, has expanded since episode one, but they are looking to further expand in the Northwest. They have a four overall, um, overall ranking rating advantage. Research Stadium is full of energy as the teams. Yay, Research Stadium! I already talked about Research Stadium in week one, episode one, not week one. This is not weeks of a season. It was like two weeks ago, though. It's kind of rare that I do a series more than a couple episodes. Oregon State with a three-point lead. Now a four-point deficit. Who's going to do something? One-point deficit. Um, Eight-point deficit. A lot of points deficit. Washington State is running up the score a little bit. Yeah. Can Oregon State come back? Oh, oh my god, they actually just did. Oh my gosh. Oregon State won by... By one point. 44-43. That was, a uh, Slow that down if you want to see it again. I, I kind of blinked and they were winning. Um... That's... That's wild. Did, I did not think that the Beavers were going to pull it off. That's pretty cool. Um, Now they have all of Washington. All of Oregon. And a good bit of Montana. Congrats to Oregon State. Woo, yay. Now they just have a big orange corner. It's like one of the things you put on the table to stop a baby from hitting his face on the corner of the table. Wazoo is gone. 
who is next 76 teams after this we'll we will have 75 it will be USU Utah State who hasn't done anything they could play Boise they could play Wyoming they are going to do neither they're gonna play Oregon State they're actually going to play Oregon State. Okay. Is Boise going to be covered on three sides? Yes, they are. Oregon State. Wow, they're the home team again. U. S. U. I guess I'm a Utah State fan now. Oregon State is my... Uh, okay, okay. Let me think about it. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to say it. Oregon State is my Pac-12 North team. Oregon State is my favorite Pac-12 North team. I actually do like Washington State a lot. Um... They're barely even Washington State. They're more, they're more like West Idaho State. They're like 50 miles across the border. 20, 20 miles. Barely even in the state they represent. Anyway, Oregon State is a lot better than Utah State. But are they going to show it? They're going to take a 10-point lead. They're going to take a 17-point lead. They're going to take a 24-point lead. Oh my goodness, Utah State scored. Utah State scored again. Utah, wait, what? Hold on, hold on, what's going on? Uh, Oregon State, do not pull the uh, Indianapolis Colts. No, no, they, they kind of clutched up with those last two scores. There they go. 45-23 is the final in favor of the Big Orange Beavers. My favorite Pac-12 North team. Goodbye, Oregon. Er, no. No, goodbye, Utah State. Anyway, that's cool. Boise State has like a a good well Boise State is either going to play Oregon State or Utah um Utah State though Utah State is gone This is going to be the final game of the episode it was almost Oregon State again Instead it's going to be SMU the Mustangs that honestly no one really cares about. Um, they could play TCU. Oh my goodness. No, 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 no. Let's zoom in on this map. This is what I didn't want to happen. This arrow is like pretty straight west. It goes directly through the logo. Uh, no, no, I don't want to have to make this decision, and then someone gets upset. I'm going to say that it clips North Texas. I, yeah, I'm going to say that the arrow is also going just the slightest bit North That, that's a tough decision. North Texas versus SMU. This is a rivalry game. Um, maybe you've heard of it. We'll find out the name in a second. It's the Safeway Bowl. 
even though I'm pretty sure there aren't any Safeways in Texas. Well, I mean, there aren't any Safeways that I have seen in Texas. They're all in Florida. That's cool, though. SMU is a five point overall advantage over North Texas. Texas. North Texas at Apogee Stadium. One of my favorite stadiums. It's pretty much just a one tier bowl except for the uh, I don't know what direction end zone is. You'll see it. You'll see it. That one. That end zone. Did not mean to do that. That end zone has wings. Um... Because it has wings. Because it's North Texas. They're cool like that or something. Nine point ball game in the second quarter. SMU two point lead. Um, a lot, a lot of points. Nine points again. <sighs> More points. Five points. Five point lead for SMU in the fourth quarter with ten minutes left. No, North Texas takes the lead. No, SMU ties it. No, SMU takes the lead. And SMU wins. Wow, congrats. SMU 29, North Texas 22. North Texas is... Bamboozled. North Texas is definitely bamboozled. Um, they beat Oklahoma, but, uh, can't defend their home turf against rival SMU. A little bit embarrassing. A little bit. If this map didn't have county borders, I would definitely prefer that. But I stole it for free off the internet, off this, this Reddit link in description. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Until the next one, peace out.